When it comes to food, it's never easy to fool the taste buds. Also, we should never underestimate the appearance of a dish. Both of those things come to life in conversations on social media. Today, I'm going to meet a chef who made a career out of blending her desserts with art. Her name is Janice Wong, and she is the owner of 2AM Dessert Bar. Personally, I've tried her desserts over the years, and if you're just like me, you know that they are fantastic. We're gonna go behind the feed to step into Janice's kitchen and learn from the pro. We're here with Janice in the flesh. I'm <laughs> slightly nervous because it's my first time meeting her, but I've tried your desserts over the years, so it's great to put a face to the name. How did you come up with the name 2AM Dessert Bar? Well, 2AM for me is quite dear because it's also the time I used to sleep <laughs> okay. and crave for desserts. Late night cravings for desserts are always a thing. We just wanted to give people that experience uh, where you can really enjoy fine desserts, even past midnight, and enjoy a glass of wine with it. Okay, so Janice has kindly agreed to take us behind the scenes to show us how she makes some of her desserts. This is your most complex creation to date. Okay. It's got a lot of steps. So, shall we start? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got, you know, smoked vanilla mousse, we've got the raspberry gel. Also, I've got this banana mousse here mm. as well. So I've got some nitrogen here. And we're gonna start dipping. First of all, I've got this guava sherbet. I'm just going to dip it a little bit here and then I'm going to coat it in our banana mousse so you can get your hands a little bit dirty as well you can just yeah and then I'm just going to make sure there's no little blemishes because you want the ball to be really nice and round and smooth as well right? here is our raspberry gel and then we're going to dip it over the smoked vanilla I think we can do two more layers before it gets too heavy. You mean it's not heavy already? It's very heavy. It might just drop any time. <laughs> Guys, it's very heavy, you know. <laughs> so what inspired this creation and how did you conceptualize it? The idea was to really bring the nostalgic flavours. Anything that I taste with like banana caramel, somehow it always brings me back to memories of childhood. Okay, so we're done. Look at that! Massive ball. Okay, so now I'm going to remove the stick. That's the main uh, component, so we're about 50% done. And then we're going to start building the dessert. So now this is the vanilla ice cream. We're just going to make these pearls. So we just gently drop it, so it's really nice balls that uh, form. From idea to kind of putting it on the plate, how long did it take you to come up with the Whimsical Forest? I think about one entire month. I mean, we were doing a lot of research. What was the best uh, way to represent this dessert? You know, um, we want to incorporate a bit of nature, but you know, a little bit of whimsy. Um, and red is always the color when you think about Whimsical. And I didn't want to touch chocolate. About 60% of our menu is yeah. all chocolate items, but we wanted to do something that was uh, non-chocolate. So let's start plating. So I'm going to show you. Um, I'm just going to spin this for you. And then what you're going to do, is going to put this bottle right in the middle. And from the middle, as it keeps spinning, you just go out. All in one direction like that. Right. I'm horrible at this. Not too bad. Yeah, not too bad. <laughs> okay, we're not gonna use it. <laughs> we're not gonna use it. <laughs> right after she says not bad. It's like straight through the hat, man. I'm telling you, when you're doing this, it's so hard to keep a straight line. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. Maybe it's a bit tough. Yeah. Yes. Let's try it again. Okay. Press really hard. Yeah. Really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going. You got it. Yeah. You got it right to the end. All right. Beautiful. I did it. All right, we're gonna use it. Yeah. Three tries. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for reminding me that this is not my first try. <laughs> but yes, we did it. And this right. would be the plum. The plum gel. Plum gel. So here's the aerated cheese bed. Beautiful. 
So what we have here is two tablespoons of cheese mousse and we aerate it to this light. So it just really melts in your mouth completely. And so I'm going to just now put the red ball on top of it. So now it just sits really nicely on. And then here we're going to start putting the herbs. Okay. So I've got all these nice little herbs. Okay. So now I'm going to add a couple more decorations to this. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to add some citrus gel here just to give it a little bit of um, colour. So I'm just going to add a little bit more of the sauce on the outside. Mm -hmm. nice. So that's a really nice um, salted caramel that we got. So we're almost done. I'm going to add that in. And we serve this table side with the pros on it like that. Mm. Okay, so we're almost done. Last step, we're going to add in this aromatic herb oil to it. So I just want to add my last couple of pearls on there. You know, give it a little bit of that smoky effect. And then we just add in this really nice herb oil. Wow. Beautiful colour. It's all about transformation as well as we serve it to the guests. You know, they're always taking their photos and everything. Before they cut it open, the cheese bit actually melts a little bit more and it goes down. You actually really see these nice layers of flavors um, and colors. So it's just really surprising when somebody cuts it open and go like, oh, how did you manage that? Make yeah. that, right? Mmm. It's got like a little bit of everything. The sweetness and the smoky. And then also the cheese kind of neutralizes everything. Yep. Surprisingly. It's like always a discovery. Every bite, you want to discover more flavors and you're trying to figure out like, oh, what's that flavor, right? I was going to say, the second time I tasted it, it tasted really different from the first. The first taste had a little more of an earthy um, tone to it. And by the second, it became a lot sweeter. It's super good. On to the next one, we are going to make another dessert. The Cassis Plum was in fact featured on MasterChef Australia. What was that like for you? Well, it was pretty amazing. I mean, it's very inspiring not only just to create for the uh, contestants, but also inspiring for me as a Singaporean and a woman to be on there, you know, and to really inspire others back. Right, so what were the contestants made to do in that pressure test? They have to make everything from scratch with a limited time of only three hours. But of course, we're not going to do that today. I've got everything ready for you. I made all the components and all you're gonna do is just to plate it up. I nearly had a heart attack. I was like, I am by no means a master chef, man. But great! Okay, with, with your guidance, mm -hmm. I'm gonna feel a lot better, so. Fantastic. Let's work this Cassis Plum! So I'm gonna take you through this. There's about 10 different steps, but I'll guide you through every single step. Here we got the plum gel. What you're gonna do is you're gonna actually just drizzle that across. Beautiful! Oh, look at that! Great! Here we have this plum liqueur granita and you're gonna just put it right in the middle. Okay, now you can put the ball in the middle. So that is actually the black currant shell. It's made with uh, black currant, water, a little bit of xanthan powder. So the powder helps to solidify, yeah. give it the shape. What you're going to do is you're going to put some of these like these are rice, rice krispies, krispies um, and it's tossed with raspberry powder. You can pop one in your mouth. I can. Yeah, it's really nice. Because I'm professional, so I eat it though. Okay. And then now you're going to squeeze that inside. Now press this really gently. Super, a little bit more. Oh, you did a great job. Okay, great. So you're done with the uh, yogurt out of flour foam. We're gonna put that plum jelly just on top to cover it. Okay. And then we're gonna put all these around. And I'm gonna give you a tweezer for the pastels because they're quite wet. I feel so profesh. It's good. So now you're gonna put these special yuzu pearls. Mm -hmm. They're citrus and light. I smell um, them from here already. Yeah. And we can put the flower. Yeah, perfect. So yeah, to finish off, you're just gonna take a little bit of this raspberry powder. I'm gonna sprinkle it around. And I think we're done. Yeah, we're done. Now it's time to cut it open and try. Cutting a pretty thing. Oh, here we go. Wow. Look at that. The yogurt to shell ratio is really nice, actually. It's quite even. 
Mmm. I taste a little bit of that like sour sweet. Yeah, it's really aromatic as well. Yeah. Like once you cut it open, you can smell the elderflower, the yogurt, yeah. the plum. How long did it take you to perfect this? Uh, months. The first thing I did, it just collapsed when I when I did the first try, and then I had to stabilize it. So I had to create like new recipes to stabilize it. When you say stabilize, you mean the shell, right? The shell, and it shouldn't be too stabilized because then there's a, there's a lot of additives on it, and then the mouthfeel is just not right. But what I wanted was something super refreshing, melting up mouth and super clean. I actually thought that the shell would be kind of hard and solidified, but this one really does melt in your mouth. Some of my desserts only have three to four components, but the two that you did today were the, one of the most complex ones. This has about 10 elements. We've got the yuzu pose, they're so intricate. Add a little bit of acidity to it, the balance of the sweetness and the sour from the yogurt and the black currant, and also adding a touch of the liqueur into the dessert as well, just to give it more depth. I really appreciate all of these flavors coming together because it's really difficult to put three ingredients together, much less 10. So you should really try this because it's quite something. Having the opportunity to create two of Janice's most treasured desserts was like a tick off my bucket list. So the next time you're taking a photo of your favorite dessert, just remember that a lot of skill and dedication went into making it. We've come to the end of today's episode and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified every time a new episode is out. Catch you in the next one!